Okay, we're going to get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our virtual studio visit with Emmanuel Asahor. My name is Michael Magnuson. I'm the new public program and outreach coordinator at the Art Gallery of Alberta. To start this program, I would like to do a land acknowledgement. The AGA is located in Treaty 6 territory in Edmonton, the traditional land of a diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Inuit, and Ojibwe, Salto, and Anishinaabe. We acknowledge and extend gratitude to the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, whose footsteps have marked these lands for generations and who continue to call this place home today. This is the third event as part of our public program for the exhibition, The Scene, curated by Lindsay Sharman and Danielle Siemens. The Scene celebrates what's happening in art right now in Edmonton, featuring emerging and mid-career artists. The scene is closing soon in the next few days, so please come to the AGA either today or tomorrow to see the exhibition in person. It's truly fantastic, so don't miss it. One thing to mention is that I will be moderating the chat, so if you have any questions for a Q&A, you can write them in the Q&A function uh, at any point, and we will try to answer them at the end, so please uh, get your questions ready. Uh, this AGA Live is made possible in part through support from the Heart and Soul Fund by EPCOR. Thank you very much to EPCOR, and I would also like to thank the Canada Council for the Arts for their support as well. Uh, now, without further ado, I would like to introduce Emmanuel. So Emmanuel Asahor graduated in 2015 with a BFA in Art and Design from the University of Alberta and is currently finishing up a master's degree at the University of Guelph. His work has been a subject of numerous solo and group exhibitions throughout Canada. Operating within the mediums of painting, photography, and installation, Emmanuel seeks to ask pertinent questions about society by investigating situations present in his community. His recent work explores the garden as a complicated sanctuary space. So without further ado, take it away, Emmanuel. Thank you, Michael. Um, uh... Yeah, it's nice to be here. It's strange to not see um, faces and people that are um, watching. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess it's just really nice to share this space with you all. Um, I'm currently based in Guelph, Ontario, um, which is uh, Treaty 3 territory, and it's the ancestral lands of the Anishinaabeg peoples and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations. Um, so I'm definitely very grateful to be able to make work here and live on this land and kind of think of, think through my ideas here. Um, so I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here. Um, yeah, I guess this is a studio visit. So it's not really like a talk talk. I don't have too much stuff to say. I've got some images to show. Some of, some of the images are from the works that are in the show. Um, in the scene and then the other images are things that I've worked on um, finishing my master's um, and just sort of thinking about um, I guess like things coming up next so I was going to show you my studio and like move the computer around but I'm actually in the midst of moving so the studio is kind of a mess right now because I'm trying to pack things up quickly um, but I have some images here so you can see my stacks of books that are probably about like 30% of the books that I have um, that I recently had as I finished up the MFA program. So a lot of books went back to the library, but these, these ones are still sticking around and moving to the next studio. Um, I guess we can go to the next image. Um, and so this is kind of the, yeah, the mess. Um, I tend to make a lot of my work, yeah, using the walls and the floors. So the, my floor, my studio floor is def definitely very messy and if you were here, you would not be willing to sit on the floor. Um, and I guess we can go to the next image and you can sort of see the Tupperware um, boxes and um, yeah, some chloroplast to like make uh, little soft, uh, soft boxes for some paperworks. Um, but yeah, this is, this is my studio. And uh, if, if things were not virtual, it would be nice to welcome you in and and you know maybe share some tea or something um so i guess we'll yeah i guess i'll move on to maybe talking a little bit about the works that are in the show um uh and I, i'll just say like i'll look at the chat as well and if anybody has any questions at any point and wants to sort of like 
um, speak to something I'm saying um, immediately, like feel free to just drop that in the chat and either myself or Michael will um, get to it just so I don't, yeah, this, this doesn't necessarily have to be a talk talk. So we can try and simulate some sense of conviviality or something, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, so in the scene, I have two paintings. Um, I've been thinking of my mother's garden and I've been thinking of my father's garden. Um, I'm not actually sure which one this one is. I think this is mother's. Um, and the next image or two images from now from this is, so the next one is the other painting. Um, something I've been thinking about, so like as Michael said in the introduction, I've been thinking about gardens as um, constructed and complicated sanctuary spaces. Um, and this work was really interesting to show in Edmonton because I made this probably about seven months into the MFA program here. So I was already living in Guelph and, and kind of starting to work here. But these are based on photographs um, from uh, gardens in the Queen Alexandria neighborhood in Edmonton, which is where um, I used to I used to live. Um, and then, if you want to move to the next image, um, with these with these works, one thing I was really trying to think about was making, yeah, like trying to make a representation of a garden that had a tactile or like a physical sense of. I guess maybe what I would call like a fraughtness in the idea of the garden, because on the one hand, it's sort of like, can be this really idyllic um, concept, um, thinking around ideas of like beauty or even the idea of sanctuary. Um, and that's something that really draws me to gardens, um, as well as the sort of like underbelly of the complexity of, um, you know, land politics or even uh, socioeconomic issues around who is even able to, um, you know, have a have a house and be able to actually cultivate a sort of garden. So the gardens become this really interesting metaphor for me to sort of think about, um, I guess, sim simply put, just sort of like the current predicament where you've got this sort of like extremes of beauty and, you know, really good things happening, but also like really intense and hard things that we're trying to navigate as a as a society. Um, and if you want to go to the next images, um, that just sort of shows a little bit more of the tactility of the material. And so what I was interested in here was sort of like, yeah, making a, a painted representation of um, based off of, off of a photograph. And then I basically like took a power sander to the drop cloth that the, that the image was initially put onto. And it sort of like disturbed the material and kind of took away the, the sense of finish and introduced another, um, I guess another mark that the viewer then has to contend with. Like the image does, doesn't just stay as sort of this um, uh, finished or uh, idyllic thing, but there's actually something um, that, that brings a bit of tension and something to contend with um, in the image. So I, I found that interesting. Um, the next things I'm showing in the in the show are a series of collages I made. So if you move to the next images, and I just call these garden series, um, and um, a little bit about them. Probably the the thing that kind of stands out to me as I think about these collages now is they really were uh, like they came out of necessity in the sense that. I made them, I started making them um, in the, I think it was September of 2020. So we're sort of like, we've gone through a, a pandemic summer and we're sort of now kind of coming to this place where we're all really starting to think about, okay, how do we, how do we live with this thing? And, you know, there's no sense of when is this thing ending or what's going to happen. And so my MFA program was kind of like, um, we just really didn't know where things were gonna go. It's like, are we gonna have access to the studios? Are we gonna have access to the studio for a month? And then there's gonna be another shutdown and then we have to leave the studios. Um, so two things kind of happened. A, it felt kind of like, I guess maybe like irresponsible or reckless to really invest in um, trying to make the sort of larger paintings that I'd been making before. And 
so yeah, like the investment was one thing. It's just like, well, there's no point starting a six foot by five foot painting if I'm going to have to, you know, work from home like so many other people have been doing. Um, it's not going to fit in my house. So there's like, uh, and if and if it did, my house would smell like paint thinner, which is not, not good. Um, so I had to kind of like shift off my, shift up my materials and, and figure out a way to work in a, on a smaller scale and, um, the second thing that happened was, um, I, I think probably like many, like many of you would feel this way too. There was just a sense of like, I didn't even really know how to compute or process or begin to understand just like everything that was going on. Um, not just in terms of the pandemic, but the sort of like intensity around racial justice and racial inequity and systemic stuff is just like, there was just so much going on. Um, and I had, a, I had a, actually had a really hard time in the studio um, making work or at least making work the way, the way I had been um, before the pandemic and before the summer. Um, and so this collage just actually came out of just like a, a desire to really like slow things down. And so what I did was I returned to a lot of the source images. If you wanna to move to the next um, collage, I returned to a lot of the source images that had been the foundation for um, my paintings. And instead of having to paint them again or trying to like retranslate them, I just started cutting them up and trying to use that process as a way of just sort of like thinking through by just doing and not necessarily really assessing or really saying, how does this match up with the concept or whatever. I would just show up to the studio every day and, you know, put on some music and just make collages until I was ready to go home. Um, and so they became really interesting to me because I, yeah, I basically spent the whole semester just doing that, like four months, just making collages over and over again. And I would photocopy parts of uh, the collages and print those out and use that in other parts of the collages. I would photograph them, print them out. Um, and so they, it became this sort of, uh, uh the way the way i like to think about it is sort of like you know in gardening where you you're transplanting or you're grafting and 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 it just became this sort of like uh like simultaneous process where i had like five or six collages you know on the go at a certain at a given time and they were just speaking to each other and, and influencing the way i thought about them and um different uh, rules would come up where it's sort of like, you know, okay, what happens with this one is sort of was like, you know, how much can I just keep adding where you're, you're seeing the layers above, you're seeing the layers underneath, the layers above, or speaking to some of the layers underneath, um, using the tape, thinking about the light and how it cuts through the image, using the white um, of the paper and how that sort of speaks to sort of the, the highlights in the, in the photograph. And if we go to the next image, um, actually cutting through parts of the photograph and like right in the center of this image is actually um, the, the backside of one of the collages became, or the backside of one of the photographs became kind of like a part of the image. So it creates this sort of like false um, atmospheric perspective um, that, that I think kind of speaks to the kind of hazy sky um, in the sort of top left section of the image. Um, and yeah, these collages just really became a way for me to sort of like think through, um, to, to use the, the source material I already had um, at this time, like at this point, because of, you know, thinking around like social distancing and, and how to work in the midst of a pandemic. I also wasn't able to go out and like take more photographs, which is something I, I, I do a lot in my practices. I, I just go for walks and I photograph gardens that I come across. So I really had to just make do with what I had. And the thing that became, I think the thing that stood out like at the end of the process that I, I noticed and I was like, oh, like this is really probably the, the um, like the biggest benefit of this whole process was it became like a form of gardening. Um, so that kind of like took on this idea of really thinking about the act of gardening and maybe even trying to draw a correlation between an artistic practice and a gardening practice or thinking about an artistic practice as a form of gardening. Um, I, I 
have plants that I, I try to keep alive. And in the summer, I grow plants on my balcony. But it, it, it was, I don't know if this makes sense. And this is where I wish I could see people's faces and know if this is landing. But uh, it does feel like something different to think about um, an artistic practice as a gardening practice. Um, thinking about the sense that a garden is constructed and has sort of like formal elements that go into the creation and, and organizing or organization of space. Um, thinking about the acts of, of you know, composition and balance and, and also care, thinking about the, the intentionality that goes into thinking about, you know, how do these things work together? Are they operating in a, in a way that, um, yeah, thanks April. <laughs> um, like, are these things operating in a way that is like you know mutually beneficial you know uplifting or are they operating in a way that like one is opposing the other or the contrast becomes um detrimental to another part of the image which really is just is composition like that's how you, you think about um balancing the structure of an image so it, it was really cool to be able to show the collages alongside the the paintings in the scene um in my practice, I tend to work a lot with photography, but um, I, I haven't really, um, especially in relation to the paintings, I haven't really like shown them side by side. And, and I think it's really interesting to sort of see how they speak to each other because you've got these moments of, of uh, clarity of detail, but also moments of like subtlety and abstraction that come, comes from, you know, photocopying an, an image over and over again, and things start to break down. Um, and that sort of like atmosphere of feeling like, you know, you, as a viewer, you're trying to reconcile the image. Um, you're trying to make sense of the image is actually something that I think I really seek um, in my paintings. So I guess we'll go to the next slide. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess I'll just say, you know, so this is, this is one of the kind of source photographs uh, for a painting I'll talk about later. And this is actually a photograph of a, like an overgrown garden in Edmonton as well. Um, and if you want to go to the next slide, um, this is the back of you know one of the one of my collages or one of my uh, photographs. And something I'd been doing was um, sometimes been part of my like studio experience. Something a, a question I've been really trying to ask in the studio these days is how to really see an image, like how to think about the what is the structure of an image? How is the image actually really like, like what does it compose of? And one of the things that I find with photography, personally for me, um, a lot of the time there's too much information and it actually becomes distracting for me. So something I always try to do is, is like, I try to simplify the image. Um, and so one strategy I'd been using was I'd print out these photographs in my studio and I would submerge them in water, which would make the inkjet kind of bleed. Um, so if we go back to the previous image, the sort of like, you know, haziness of the blue, the fact that the green becomes kind of like fairly general, um, it starts to almost feel like a, like a color field image um, where the, the details are not as, as crisp or as precise. Um, and, and what that does for me is it really starts to make, it, it opens up the image for me and I start to see, oh, like this is, this is how actually how the colors relate to each other. This is the inherent like structure or abstraction that the image is actually built off of because working with landscape imagery, like, man, it's just so much image, like there's just so much detail. Um, and for me, I, I've, I've had to try to figure out ways to simplify in order to actually begin to understand um, what's going on um, in, the, in the image. So I guess we'll zoom uh, to image number 10. Um, and so this is just a, a, a thing, like if, I, if you were in the studio, I would show you physically um, so I don't know if you know, if you can see it, but you know, the image on the right side, uh, is, is sort of the, the understructure for this collage where another image is sort of pasted on top. And, and so, you know, I would work with these images and, you know, put the water on them, they would bleed and then I would photocopy that and print it out again. Um, and then, you know, this particular photograph was a source image for a painting. So you can see in like the top right and top left corner, there are these sort of holes, which are actually just the holes from the push pins, um, keeping it up uh, on my studio wall. And so the next image um, is the painting that 
that uh, that kind of came from that, uh, uh, that the initial photograph and sort of breaking it down and thinking through the image through first off the photograph, then the photograph that's like simplified with the water, then the photograph that's thought through again in the form of collage. Um, and, and I'd say all these steps kind of um, in, in the studio are ways of just trying to understand the image, ways of trying to see what's there, which then opens up the field for me to then be able to think about the paintings and the abstraction in them. And then later on, I'll, I'll show some etchings. So um, I guess there are like two detail shots that will sort of show like how I navigate the sort of like generalization or abstraction, um, the kind of like color field type, color field sections of the paintings, as well as, you know, moments of precise like detail. I like to think about it as like precise, but also gestural drawing. And it speaks to that relationship that the photograph or the altered photograph has. So we can look at the detailed shots. Um, and one thing that's interesting about this paintings or, or this painting, one thing I really enjoy about this particular one is the sky. Um, if you were to see it in person, it, it, it's a bit more obvious, but like the, the sky is like taped out and like cut. So the, the hard edge is this weird, contrast with a lot of the softness and the bleeding and the smudging that's going on in the rest of the painting but that was a direct influence of you know being in the studio with so many collages with hard edges as well as soft edges that just like directly just led into the way I started thinking and seeing how the paintings could operate um so yeah that was really just like I hope that kind of gives you a sense of like, yeah, how this work is being made and how the studio is operating and um, a little bit about the, um, a sense of my process in the studio. Um, I, I find whenever I, I go to these virtual studio visits or even actual studio visits, I'm, I'm just curious as to like how people make the work. So again, if folks have questions about, you know, specific choices I'm making, or if you've seen the works in real life and there's something that you're like, how did that happen? Or why'd you make that choice? Like, feel free to, feel free to ask. Um, and yeah, so we can jump back to sort of the studio process thing. Um, so the next image, I guess I'll just uh, share my MFA thesis work. Um, this is, yeah, one of the things like, I wish I could just like, um, bring the show to Edmonton to show a lot of the Edmonton community like this is what I've been doing for the past two years or this is the culmination of the past two years of work and I wish folks from Edmonton were able to see the show so just a little plug if you're coming to the GTA area or if you're coming to Guelph like let me know the show is at the Art Gallery of Guelph uh, till October um, but yeah I guess we'll just we can just sort of go through um, the images um, this is sort of the intro wall. This is a, a large scale painting called Sylvia's Garden Entrance. It's probably my biggest painting to date. It is um, 12 feet wide by seven and a half feet tall. And it's sort of this two panel piece because that was how I had to make it in the studio. Cause if not, I wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been able to get it out. Um, something that shifted for me after thinking about the collages, um, one thing that kind of, I guess through the rest of the uh, the winter and into the winter semester. And this is what I ended up basing a lot of my thesis paper on. Um, I read a book or yeah, a collection of short essays by an American poet named Ross Gay. And it's called The Book of Delights. And the book is basically his attempt to write a short essay um, every day from one birthday to the next birthday. And the challenge he gave himself was to write an essay about something that he delighted in that day. Um, and on the surface, that can seem really cheesy, um, but he expressly states that his reason for doing so, his reason for thinking about the light, um, Ross Gay is also a black man living in America um, and also a gardener. Um, his reason for thinking about the light was because of the um, what's the right word? Um, I don't know what the right word is, but this is the word that comes to mind, like just the, the prevalence, the like constant prevalence of um, trauma, grief, 
um, bad news, um, fear, anxiety, um, that he just felt like he was, he was living with. Um, and so he made this very careful intention um, or yeah, this considered intention to say, okay, like every day I'm going to ask myself, like, what is one thing I delighted in? And I thought this book was really beautiful because it, it didn't just like, he was able to capture the weight of, yeah, the, the grief and the fear and the trauma um, and the anxiety that I think many of us are feeling today, but still pay attention to the fact that um, delight or, or being able to delight in things was uh, um, something that helped him to survive and, and also helped him to thrive even in the midst of um, hard things. And so one, one thing that I've been thinking about, because I've been thinking about gardens for a few years now, and so I was like, okay, like, what is it about these gardens? Like, why have I been so curious about them and, and interested in representing them and re-representing them? You know, you take the photograph, you come back to the studio, you make a drawing, you make a painting, you make an etching, you photocopy that, you print it out again. Like, what is it? And I was reading some writing by um, an American... Uh, I think like cultural theorist, her name is Elaine Scarry. And she was writing about beauty. And one thing that kind of stood out to me was she was like, beauty tends to um, be self-reproducing, that an object of beauty um, regenerates itself. It, it causes either the viewer or somehow in its own self, it, it recreates itself. And I was like, oh, like maybe the thing about these gardens and the reason why I've been invested in these depictions of gardens is actually because I've been invested in um, depictions of beauty and thinking about beauty in a similar way as Russ Gay would sort of position delight as a sort of like necessity for survival or like a precursor to, to thriving in the midst of harsh realities. So that's sort of the, the, the core essence of the work. Um, and I think I'll just, um, Helen, if you just want to like move from image to image and just, you know, pause on there for like a couple of seconds before moving on to the next one, I'll just sort of let you see the show um, and I'll stop talking for a little bit. Actually, I do want to introduce this one. These are, it was, it was really nice to get back into printmaking. I haven't made prints in a little bit. Um, so these are two um, etchings that are, are part of the show. So I guess that's probably close to the last image. Um, yeah, so that's that's my uh, that's my thesis show, um, and yeah, I guess I'll just open the floor now. At this point, like I've talked for almost thirty minutes, um, and see if folks have questions or things that they're curious about. Um, uh, yeah, let's do that.
Hi everyone, I'm back. So yeah, I guess this is our Q&A portion. Uh, so please put your questions in the chat and then we will try to answer them. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for introducing your work and exhibition mm. and also uh, giving us a peek into your thesis show. It's been really interesting. So maybe I'll start off with some questions for myself while we also, uh, we also look at questions. We also have Facebook, so I'm gonna be checking uh, Facebook as well. So you can put the comments in the Facebook chat uh, since we are also live streaming. So something that struck, uh, struck me or like kind of like got my brain thinking is you talked a little bit about your influence and the first image that you decided to show was these books. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really interesting how you later talked about uh, the writer Rasquet, which was really interesting. So I wanted to learn a little bit more about like the starting of a work. Mm -hmm. So are you like in my mind, like how does it work? I feel like you're walking through a garden, then you take a snap, or what what's the like the what's what's the starting point for you? Yeah, um uh, a cohort member of mine in the MFA program uh basically like talked about talked about her her artistic practice um, as actually not necessarily having a starting point. It's sort of like there are these, you know, there's option A, option B, option C, option D. And the practice, the thing can start at any one of those points. And it sort of like cycles through these, um, I guess, uh, like, yeah, points in a, in a, in a process. Mm -hmm. um, for me, yeah, maybe, maybe, I guess, yeah, none of the images would necessarily really come into being without the, the process of going for walks and photographing gardens that um, are in my neighborhood. So this is a practice I started in, in Edmonton, um, in, in Queen Alex, they're just sort of like, yeah, just beautiful front lawn gardens. And then, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you meet a person working on their garden and I would usually just like say hi and can I photograph your garden? And, a lot of times they're like, oh man, you think this is the garden? Check out the one in the back. <laughs> um, and so, you know, make some friendships that way. And also, um, yeah, see, see gardens that I, I, would, I didn't even know existed. And then I would sort of bring these images back to the studio. Um, a lot of times they would just sit on my phone for a long time. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe a month later or two months later, I'm just looking through images and I'm like, oh, there's something interesting about that one. Print it out, sit with it in the studio. So like the chair painting, and that chair photograph has has moved with me, like it moved with me from Edmonton to Guelph. So I've had that photograph probably about four years now, maybe even five years now. And it's just sort of been a recurring thing that's come back um, mm -hmm. for me. So I don't know, I don't know if that answers. No, that, I, that, yeah. that definitely answers it. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. with like Edmonton and Guelph. It's like they both have really these beautiful landscapes mm -hmm. and um you know, we have the River Valley here, which is really iconic and very nice. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just curious, maybe you can talk a little bit about like your the evolution from, you know, being in Edmonton and then moving to Guelph, like how has, because obviously your, the space has changed so much, like the environment that you're walking in has changed so much. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that, that, that change or that evolution? Yeah, totally. I, I think so. Um, image number, do, 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 do. the painting, the really large painting, Sylvia's Garden entrance, probably is a good way to sort of talk about it. I think one of the things that stood, like surprised me when I moved to Ontario, it's just the green here is so different. Like, I don't know if, I don't know what it is, um, if it's the humidity or the fact that it's a longer growing, I don't, I don't like just the weather's different, I guess. Um, but like the colors here, like when I, and, because, and, and I think it happens the reverse, like when someone from Ontario moves to Alberta, they're like, oh my gosh, like the colors are so different. So definitely like a difference. I, I feel like the last two years I've had a different sense of color because the landscape um, ha, has changed. Um, that painting, Sylvia's Garden Entrance, is based on um, a, a garden that's owned by a friend I met in Guelph, a uh, similar thing. I was out for a walk saw this person working in the garden. I was like, you know, beautiful garden. Can I take a few photo photographs? And they were like, yeah, sure. You know, and kind of built a little friendship. And she was like, check out the back. Um, and my experience of that garden was just walking in and being just like, oh my gosh, like, does it ever even, does it end? Um, 
and it does is just you know guelph also at the university of guelph there's a landscape architecture school mm -hmm. um and, and it's a really well i think really well renowned landscape architecture program so i think a lot more of the gardens here are like designed by landscape architects um mm -hmm. and more sort of like strategically um or I don't, yeah, I don't know, like just intentionally designed to really like get, get this like oomph. Um, mm -hmm. And the season is longer. I saw, I've seen plants that I'd never seen before. Um, and this painting actually kind of felt like a, maybe a celebration of that in, ter in terms of the intensity of the color and the scale and try to mimic this sort of experience of being just sort of like overwhelmed by like, the, yeah, the scale of a thing, but also just like the like, intense nuance of color and line and, and all that stuff. So um, I think moving to Guelph was really good for my practice and it was just like, you know, formal development of like the processes in my work because it brought, it brought new visual, like, it, it, yeah, it, it brought new images uh, that I had to contend with or yeah. even just a new visual experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, traveling and moving definitely does that to you. Yeah. So, I was really appreciative that you showed us your studio. Can you talk us through maybe like what's it like to, or what's your kind of like studio ritual if you have any, or what's your like working practice or anything of that nature? Like what yeah. is it like to be, a, to have a studio, I guess, since some people don't have one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was um, not in the best place when I couldn't, come to the studio like mm -hmm. during in the in the last summer we couldn't we didn't have access to the studio and I don't think I realized how much the how much of like a, uh like a haven or something that the studio actually is for me until you you know you lose access uh to it and then you're like oh like this was actually really good um and not just good for me like also really good for my partner because it just means they don't have to deal with me being at home and being grumpy <laughs> so <laughs> so both of us were very happy when we could come when I could come back to the studio. Um, I love being in a studio. Um, I I feel like probably my my working routine is it's like it's like if you think about going to the gym, like they always say, like getting to the gym is the hard part. Mm -hmm. um, but once you're there, you like you know you'll you'll exercise. It's kind of like the reverse for me. Like coming to the studio is the easy part. Like I love coming to the studio. And I'll like make myself a coffee. A lot of times the lights will be off and I'll just sort of chill here. And then I want to do everything else. Um, <laughs> then, I, then I reply to emails. Yeah, then I right. start reading. Then I read the news. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and then after a while, I was like, yo, come on. Like, you, you got you to gotta get some work done. Got to get to work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, gotta make, <laughs> that makes a lot gotta of Got to make sense. use of this space. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I love I love being here. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, you have a really nice studio. So I have a question from the audience. Danielle wants to know, uh, and they say, I'm curious about the titles of your paintings at the AGA. Mm. What, what role does family or memory place in your work? Mm, that's really cool. Um, I, so the, the first or the second question kind of stands out a bit quicker. Mm -hmm. Memory is actually really significant for me in these paintings because one thing I'm really in like in the collages um, and and the etchings, one thing I'm really thinking about is with this work, it's less about visually representing these spaces, but actually more about trying to reproduce the experience of being in the spaces. Um, so you know, I've talked about Sylvia, Sylvia's garden entrance. Um, it's directly titled after, like, it's exactly what it is. It's the entrance. It's a picture taken from the entrance to my friend Sylvia's garden. Um, it's, it's been modified a little bit. Like I shifted the composition around. Um, and, and what I'm really trying to do there is, like someone recently asked, like, how do I know when, when these images are done? And, and the way I answered the question was, I was like, yeah, when it starts to remind me of, of what that experience feels like. So um, a lot of my choices for color and, and scale of mark and, and the sort of like looseness of the gesture, um, they're not necessarily trying to replicate the photograph, um, but they're actually trying to bring the image to a point where it sort of is 
it's activating or, or it's, it's, it's acting in a way that um, brings me back to, to that moment um, or, or could like has the capacity to um, the other image uh, centerpiece, which is the last image we showed um, with the sort of like um, potted plant that's, that's some sort of like tall grass um, along the sort of uh, covering of trees. I had this experience where it was sort of like golden hour and I was in Sylvia's garden and I'd been doing some photography and just the way the light hit that potted plant, um, it kind of was golden. It felt, it just, it felt golden because of, yeah, like home, like sunset. Um, but it was covered by this bush and everything else around it seemed kind of dark and foggy, but the potted plant seemed to be like iridescent or something. Um, so I, I think that's the way the the way um, memory kind of functions in these images is sort of like trying to create garden images that feel like a garden experience. Um, and and as the family, I, I, get, I guess you're probably referring to. I, I'm, I've been thinking of my mother's garden. I've been thinking about my father my father's garden. Um, it, it's less family in those ones and more thinking of, around the idea of like potentiality. Um, so with that one, uh, you know, a question that was sort of coming up a lot in grad school was sort of like, oh, you know, why are you documenting other people's gardens? Why not your garden? You know, why not gardens from back home in Nigeria? And blah, blah, blah. And the honest answer was like, you know, my parents didn't have time to make those gardens. Um, and so the, the painting became a way for me to think about, okay, using what I have, there's this, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, what's his name now? Uh, uh, Frederick Jameson or so, he says like, it's actually impossible to picture the future um, without using images from the past or the present. Um, and I really am drawn to that idea. Like, how can you imagine a future? How can you imagine, like, if you were to create an image that's a, a, a rendering of a future, you have to still use things that you know. Like, you can't just, you know, you only know what you know. Um, so that's been a part of this work in thinking about like these gardens, as much as they're based in places that already exist, they become these sort of like alternate spaces or these, you know, my own constructed garden um, that offers the potential to actually be a third place or like a different space, an other space. Um, so I, I hope that kind of like, gets at that the, the role of family and and memory in the work yeah definitely that's mm -hmm. that's really an interesting point that you raise mm -hmm. yeah so we have another comment this one's from sarah and so it's a little bit lengthy so uh, get ready for it hello emmanuel i was thinking about when you were talking about relating the idea of the act of keeping a garden uh, keeping a gardening to okay keeping a garden to working with images of gardens and just simply relating it to beauty I am wondering if it might be more than that, like maybe tapping into the calming nature of the act of gardening and the caring for things to facilitate growth and renewal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there, do you have any response to that comment? Uh, hi, Sarah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's definitely, it's definitely more than that. Um, I think the, the, the use of the word beauty for me, um, kind of actually speaks speaks to that, you know, like a, a, you know, a practice of cutting apart something, moving it to a place, or, you know, if we just want to talk about, like, let's use the gardening metaphor, the, I think the care or the act of gardening is a, like, like beauty is not just aesthetic, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, it, there can be beautiful processes, there can be beautiful experiences. Um, and so I think that act of care that's inv invested in in gardening, um, as well as the act of, of like grief, like when your plants don't die or when your plants die, um, when uh, I, I'd had a bunch of like fights with a squirrel that kept eating my tomatoes. Um, like, yeah, like I think, I think they're all sort of, in, it's all in that, um, or it's all engaged in that, um, and so, yeah, I think, I, I think it's less, it's not just the aesthetic experience of like, oh, that's a beautiful thing, but also, yeah, thinking about the care and the process um, with, 
you know, talking to other artists and, and, and you, you know this, Sarah, as well, like, there's something to just being in the studio and, like, when you're sort of in that groove and you're working, um, it feels very similar to what I've heard gardeners say about, like, even, like, pulling out weeds, you know, like, you sort of get lost in that process or something. Um, it's a meditative process almost. It's a meditative process, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the sort of the actions you do, um, it, it feels strange to talk about painting in this way, like, maybe it feels a little hokey pokey, but, like, like I'm just reading the, the end of Sarah's question, like to facilitate growth and renewal. Like sometimes I feel that way about like, you know, these objects that we make, you know, it's like, no, like I'm gonna shift this color and I'm gonna do this thing. I'm gonna sand this part down to facilitate the emergence of this object so that this object can really like, you know, shine or something. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I like, the, I like that question. Yeah, it's a great question. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, so I have another question for myself. Mm -hmm. So the exhibition in Edmonton is called The Scene. Mm -hmm. And so I was hoping that maybe you could talk a little bit about like the art scene, scene in Edmonton or, you know, differences that you see working in different spaces now being in Guelph. So can yeah. you talk a little bit about that? I guess the first thing I want to say about the art scene in Edmonton is I miss it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I miss you guys. Um, uh, yeah, I mean... I guess, I guess my life has been quite different. Like, you know, like the, the grad school experience, at least my grad school experience has been actually very like, like, yeah, like isolated because of the pandemic and stuff. And so a lot of, I wouldn't actually say I'm really connected to the scene in Guelph, more so that I, I sort of work here and have a, have a space to sort of like ask my questions here. Um, uh, Whereas I feel like, you know, back, back in Edmonton, I was, I was a bit more like really engaged in the community through work that I was doing outside of even the studio and, um, you know, working at the AGA and getting to know people there, um, mm -hmm. showing a bit more um, outside, like, yeah, like showing at uh, like Harcourt or Snap um, uh, or at the McMullen. Um, so I, I, I guess short, short answer is like, when I think of like an art scene that I've been a part of, as of now, I still really just think of the, the like, not the AGA, um, well, maybe the AGA too, but Edmonton, I think of Edmonton. Yeah. Um, that's really sort of the, the place um, that I felt like I was really a part of a community. Um, uh, my partner and I are moving to Toronto um, now to do some work there. And, and I, I feel like I'm looking forward to, to getting a sense of, yeah, what it's like to really be in that city. And, and, and um, practice in the city as opposed to sort of being in the in the academic bubble which mm -hmm. which is what I've been in for the past two years yeah fair enough yeah it's, that kind of leads into my next question and it's talking a little bit about the your future and mm -hmm. what's next so you it, mentioned you're moving to Toronto what else are you up to um I uh <laughs> hard question uh, no i it's it, i uh i i got myself into trouble and i applied for a phd program and i, I, I got in and so i've got more school ahead of me so that's that okay. feels like these days knowing how tired i am from from finishing the mfa it feels like what was i thinking but i'm really jazzed about the about the research um mm -hmm. i think i think it'll be really fun so i'll be doing a phd um and then also just trying to yeah like um, I've heard I heard multiple people say this before I started the MFA and while I was in the MFA that like the MFA just feels like time to really hunker down and like uh, unearth some 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 like juicy starts like mm -hmm. I felt like as I was putting putting the finishing touches on my thesis paper um, it really felt like I was just beginning um, and so I'm really looking forward to just time in a studio and, and just time to really push these ideas forward further. Like I, I think some of the formal things in the work are, are, are strong and are starting to really work, but I'm just starting to get familiar with them. Um, and so it's like, all right, just like time to hunker down and, and, and produce the work and see, see, see what these, you know, it's, it's been two years of, of trying to find the language. Um, and now I think, I think I've got, you know, things that I can really start to tease for the next little bit. 
Okay, that sounds so exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just check in the Q&A and so there's no more questions in the Q&A. So I'll give one more question or one more chance for people to ans uh, ask questions, uh, but I'll have one more question for you. And it's a little bit about advice. So you're a young artist and I'm sure there's young artists watching this uh, this webinar as well. Do you have any advice for painters or young artists uh, mm -hmm. in general, like anything that you learned through your time? Uh, yeah, this question, this question, eh? <laughs> it's a, it's a hard one. <laughs> it's a little bit like, uh, you know, I, I guess the, the first thing that comes to my mind, because I was having a conversation with someone about this yesterday, you know, it, um, it might feel impossible, but it, it isn't. Um, just, just keep showing up. Um, I mean, I say this not as in like advice, but more just like stuff that I'm trying to tell myself to kind of on the, on the day to day. Um, it's, you know, it's just, just showing up and, 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 uh, being committed to your practice. Um, I think that's something I'm really trying to hold on to even at the end of this MFA program, it's sort of like, uh, there's a little bit of like, yeah, who am I? You know, what do I do next? Like, what happens now? Yeah. Um, and I don't know, you know, I don't know mm -hmm. what, I don't know what the future holds or, you know, even, um, uh, yeah, as much as you care about the work or whatever, like you, you can't necessarily really control the outcomes outside of, outside of just showing up and doing the work. So mm -hmm. uh, I think, I think that's been probably the, that's the piece of advice I hold on to. Um, so I guess I yeah. could share that. Yeah, definitely. Well, you, you can't make the work if you're not showing up You kind yeah. of have there. That's the first step. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. And, and anything outside of that is out of your control. Yeah, definitely. So maybe we'll just leave it there. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for having this chat and uh, showing us your studio and showing your thesis show and explaining your work at the current show, The Scene at the AGA. I just want to mention one more time that, you know, the show's closing this weekend. So I hope people can come down to the AGA and visit it. Um, we might have a survey uh, for this exhibition or no, for this public program. So if anyone wants to give us some feedback on this public program, please do so. Mm -hmm. And we just have a comment from Iris. Your art is beautiful. Thank you for the tour and talk. So Thank maybe you, that's a perfect way to leave it. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Um, yeah. Great. Do you have any last words? Uh, yeah, I hope you are all having beautiful days. Uh, <laughs> if, it's not, if it's not too rainy, even if it is rainy, like go outside. Um, and yeah, I hope you are all well. Thanks for thanks for being here. It's it's great. Um, I wish I could see your faces, but we will in time. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Well, bye for now. Bye, everyone. Bye.